Hello there. Do you think the people of the Ukraine are hoping their taxes have been spent on the woke and green agendas or on their defence? The first thing to say is that whatever is going on will in all likelihood end up with long-term pain for many in our society. But is it a mad, bad Russian president at fault? Or a Russian president protecting his country against a mad, bad US-led NATO? Or a 1984 ballet of subjugating the entire world? There are even some people who don't think there is an invasion. But in any event, if what's unfolding in the Ukraine can teach us anything, it is that we in the West have allowed ourselves to become weak. The strength of our society has been eroded by liberal lefty wokeism and the chickens are now coming home to roost. And there are two main aspects to this. The first is where we are now as a society and the second is how will we, in the UK, react to the privations that inflicting sanctions on Russia will have on us personally here. Because we're already being warned that those sanctions will bite us hard too for a sustained period. But right now wokeism and greenism have delivered us a society that won't say boo to a goose, a society that belittles itself at every turn, a country where its children are instructed to continually apologise for who they are and to beg forgiveness from the world for what happened hundreds of years ago. A country that has put people in positions of authority and power over us who hate the very country they live in as well as most of the people in it. A country that has been told it must spend its money on frippery and unicorn nonsense instead of on robust security of the nation, of its food and its energy. We have therefore ended up massively indebted with virtually nothing but pronouns to show for it. Worse, we have somehow gained a national belief that things must be free and there must be lots of it all the while concentrating on those pronouns and safe spaces instead of on morals. And now we have a developing situation that will challenge the foundations of this new weaker society. Energy prices will go through the roof and we might well end up in time with power cuts and energy rationing. Because once Russia turns off the spigots of oil and gas to the west, whatever other supplies there are in the world will leap in price, including our own, as it becomes scarcer and countries outbid each other for it. Russia supplies vast amounts of wheat and essential elements for us to eat and run our modern economy. Without these, we will we have all the throwaway gadgets, gizmos, clothes, shoes and food we've become not only accustomed to, but reliant upon. Are we prepared for the simpler life that must follow, the longer any such economic policies are in place? And then there's the inevitable spivs to contend with, you know, the types we saw skimming off the top during the pandemic. And how long before the government is telling us that we must tighten our belts again? Is the government preparing the petrol and food ration books for the long-haul sanctions that we will place on Russia and that Russia will place on us? Are the citizens of the UK, especially the younger ones who've never known such times outside of the recent pandemic, are they ready for this, or more importantly, ready to bear the pain of it? Or will they go to the next elections and vote for the political party that promises to give Russia whatever it needs to end the economic pain? And who do you think would be stronger and last longer in this regard? The people of the West or the people of Russia? Maybe this is part of Putin's strategy. He knows that he's no longer dealing with a sturdy British public that went through world wars and the Cold War. All he sees now is a nation that cowers from hurty words. Is this why he is so dismissive of sanctions? Is this why he appears so unperturbed by the Western rhetoric of crippling the Russian economy?
Why he doesn't even fear of being stripped of his ability to use the SWIFT International Payments Information System. One, because he thinks he has enough economic strength in depth. Two, because he knows how much of our raw materials he supplies us with, from timber to wheat to neon gas to fertiliser ingredients and more, the loss of which only adds to our cost of living woes. And three, because he thinks we in the West have no stomach for more hardship on the back of the last two years. And in the US he's only got sleepy Joe Biden to contend with. Is our nation going to once again rise to the challenge and dig for Britain? Or are many going to vote for a world where Russia and China get what they want as long as they personally get an easier life? Greta Thunberg and her army of salad chewers are not coming to the rescue. It's Greta and co who now control the political narrative in the West, but they won't be standing on the front lines with their petulant grimaces and slogans striking fear into the Russian troops. As a society, we are now weak in moral fibre and have shunned any potential protection. Maybe our military should now solely comprise of females and those that identify as anything they want to, just to ensure that toxic, non-pronoun masculinity and patriarchal ideology aren't polluting the front lines in any potential conflict. Or is this, as some people suspect, part of a 1984-style playbook which pits large superstates permanently at war with each other and is only a never-ending route to maximum austerity for the controlled proletariat? And are we being lined up to meekly obey that new future, now that the pandemic has shown how easy that can be to engineer? And after the psychological battering that our population has taken? Or is it a solitary Putin, all alone and bravely fighting off the UN, the World Economic Forum and NATO? Is he busy taking out secret US bases up to dodgy Covid business in Ukraine, as some people on Twitter have suggested? Or is it just an opportunistic Russian KGB thug drenched in power with an eye on building himself a new USSR legacy? But whichever one of those it is, it looks like we're now faced with more years of worry and deprivation unless the Russian people themselves can intervene to stop Putin. But maybe this will give us in the UK the chance to regrow our backbone and realise that respect for each other does not flow from enforcing pronouns or cancelling each other's opinions. Wokeism will never deliver respect. Respect is earned between individuals based on their actions towards each other. And as we head towards potential harder times, I'll leave you with that famous quote from the book Those Who Remain by G. Michael Hopf. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. And weak men create hard times. So what's your opinion on the ability of society to withstand the blowback from any sanctions we impose on Russia? Are we strong enough? Please like and comment below. Please subscribe and like this video, buy a mug and support me on Patreon or PayPal and thank you for watching.